Alrighty folks, we are looking at this thing again. Haven't had much time to do of anything past day or so, but uh, my hole saw hasn't come in, so I think I'm just gonna cut a plate on the table and basically take the plasma cutter and just burn two quick holes and use whatever I cut as my template. I think I was basing this on these tubes, which, well, see, I got the three inch hole saw. That would actually give me some breathing room. I'll go about three and a quarter. I got a three inch dimple die, so maybe we can just, we'll go with that. We'll just dimple die it, give it a little bit of strength. I don't know. We'll do whatever. Um, yeah, I think that's the plan. We're gonna do that. Uh, maybe I'll work on my down tube. We'll get that intercooler in. We'll try to figure out a shifter, because that thing's like, messed up and got junk in the way so to figure that part out hopefully my gears are in that I can uh, we can kind of get the back end together and then we can bleed our brakes see how that works I don't know how long till my bushing stuff comes in so oh there's always some stuff and as you know things always change for me while we're going so uh, hopefully we stick to the game plan <laughs> Oh yeah, we gotta do my transmission lines. I don't know if I'm gonna use the cooler in the transmission or I'll use an external one. We'll uh, play that one by ear and see. I gotta do the power steering line. I bought the little the little line, but I got to, I don't know where I have it, but I bought the little line so we can do that, get that hose on clamped up. That'll button up the steering. Uh, yeah, I don't know. We'll start with that and see where we get from there. So I got the intercooler, it's not really bolted in. I have the bolts, it's holding it in. I'm probably gonna oversize them. I gotta drill the bottom holes, but I'm gonna put uh, some rib zerks in just to, to bolt the intercooler in. I was gonna dimple die this, but then I realized my dimple die, it's, uh, it doesn't have a good back to run a nut and a bolt through, let alone, I don't know if I have a, a meaty enough bolt. I don't know where it is, but anyways, you can see there's a hole in there, but 
I don't have a piece, a plate that fits over this side to sandwich it. So I won't worry about that right now. Somewhere I got the, all right here. So that's a, it's a pretty large hole. I need a piece of plate to go across that. Then I can put a nut and a bolt through it. So no, no problem. We'll look at that later. For now, let's just try to test fit everything to which I've been slowly just lumping plates or lumping these chunks together, trying to make everything fit in a small little package here. It's uh, not going well. I don't want to cut into the fender and go out. I kind of want to keep hacking the body up to a minimum. Um, you know, filler could always reverse it or do something, right? But anyway, so in here we got this doing a big loop. Problem is, is my pipe is right here. Uh, let me get a, a light for you folks. There you go. You can see how tight this is. This is gonna go here to there. So I'm struggling with that a little bit. This side will be easier. I kind of have one doing this 90. I have this one up here. And I think if I took another piece like this, we can kind of make this touch down and into this pipe. So I gotta go dig through my stuff. And uh, see if we got another one of those elbows so we can use that. We got one more big Yui. So somehow we can maybe make this thing go straight down and into that pipe down there by cutting and doing some welding. So we got a whole lot of that to do yet before I can get this to fit. And then when that's all said and done, I have, which I keep calling wrong, but a blow off valve that we can stick on there. So this makes all the whooshy noises. So that'll probably sit up here or something like that. Anyways, I'm going to start cutting up these pipes and marking them so I can start welding them together.
well now I just love that thing I can't say I've ever had pretty welds like that <laughs> I mean I've had my share of problems but you know like that's the extent of it man I dig it oh, that thing is hot like you know there's some problems but you know for the most part I'll show you the pretty Ooh, look at that <laughs> so I'm gonna let that one cool uh, then I'm gonna figure out where I'm gonna put like this is the one side this uh, goes like this in the car so I kind of want to test fit it and then figure out because I think this thing is gonna be up here somewhere I'm gonna try to set it up where I want that we're gonna hole saw it we're gonna put that thing on there that thing makes all the whoosh noises when you uh, let off the gas so I bought it for something else. I think it was my Buick, and then I decided not to run a blow-off valve, so eh, we'll put that on here. And then we'll fit this one side. So this one, too hot to touch, but it goes into the intake side and goes into this, so. And then we'll have a blow-off valve up here. This one's gonna be a little more tricky. Like, I sort of know, I think, what we're going to have to do, I don't really care about flow because it's force induction, but I think I got to take an inch or so out of here, shrink this up, then this will go, and then I can try to get one of these, like one of these parts to kind of do a half elbow and get into the boot here. I think that's about the only way we can do it other than like destroying my fender, and I, I just don't want to do that, so I guess I could point it like up. <laughs> <laughs> I can point it up and it can do some crazy stuff, but uh, whatever. We'll do this one way. We'll see how it goes. If it doesn't work, we'll cut it up and we'll try it again. Not a problem. Well, that worked out really well. I'm pretty happy the way that all turned out. So we got that doing a little transition. Uh, we got this thing welded on. I'm gonna have to crimp the ends. I'm not too worried right now. I'm enjoying welding this so much. I'm just gonna probably weld a little bead around so we can clamp and not worry about these things blowing off. Uh, kind of done for the night, I think. I think the next round what we're gonna do is we'll play with this side I got to do this this and then we're gonna have to drill and tap this and put a fitting in so we can run a hose down to our wastegate 
to uh, add the boost pressure to the spring. Um, just playing it safe. I don't know. I don't know why they don't label what pressure any of the springs are. I'll probably take all the springs out and just leave it open for tuning just to see until I get my fuel tables and stuff right before we start adding boost. But I uh, just want to get the intercooling done right. Somewhere in here I'm going to have to, to put in... Uh, what is it? I picked them up. Uh, we need to know the air temp. So I'll have to wire up an air temp gate, like a, a sending unit. For some reason I thought I grabbed some somewhere when I was at a wrecking yard once. I used to have a lot of them. <laughs> I don't know, I'll find it. I know I grabbed some when I, I wandered through Bucks one day and I, I grabbed a couple. I don't know where they are right now, but I do know that I grabbed a couple. It should be in this bag, really, but I might have to hunt around the yard and find one. All I'm looking for is some of the Cavaliers just had a single little button with two wires on it, and that's the air temp. We're going to delete the mass airflow, uh, and it's basically going to run in what's called a speed density when we do the turbo. So it's going to run like an older, older car where it just read the air temp and the, the pressure. The air pressure and it kind of just tries to figure out the fuel table that way that's kind of kind of the uh the ritzy way of saying how we're going to be tuning this but anyways that's it for now tomorrow's another day Well, that one is not very pretty. Luckily, it's on the bottom where nobody's gonna see. <laughs> there we go. Look at that. That looks pretty. <laughs> <clears throat> Filling a gap and dipping your tip, very bad. Though this thing kind of goes like a champ, so I'm kind of, I, uh, I should be cleaning it between, but. <laughs> I'm doing everything wrong, but it's very forgiving and lets me keep doing it. 
Sharpened up. Ready for round two. Anyways, I'm going to test fit this. And uh, see where I got to cut this. Basically, we got to stick it back onto the turbo. Fish this over the other side. And from here, we're going to have to make an elbow this way right away. This is really dumb, but eh, that's what I got to do. I guess I can shorten this down because this is way up here. We could bring this down so it's not so big of a Yui. I'll see. I don't know that it matters. Don't really care. All right, well, let's have a peek see. All right, this thing is just smoking hot still. Try it at this angle. Splint it over here. My boot comes through here. Boy, that's a tight turn. I'll try it. Where's my other piece? Gonna cut this one pretty hot. Only because we'll probably have to take this piece and move it back. So I welded up all of these. We kind of welded a little flange on the bottom. It's not that pretty, but you won't even see any of it because it's all going to be stuck in an intercool pipe. So, anyways, we'll put this back together. We'll start drilling the bottom holes. I got these holes made. I'm going to drill the bottom ones. I think I'm going to try to put some rib zerks in here. That way, whatever, it's just easy to take on and off. Uh. Yeah, somewhere I still have to find that one rubber air intake thing that I'm thinking about, I was looking for before. Uh, we need that. So I will need it eventually. And then, like I ordered an air filter, but 
it was the wrong size so I gotta reorder that probably send that one back yeah anyways let's put this together and then I think we'll start looking at that power steering line we're gonna do that quick and then we will do those transmission lines and I believe I got to address this <laughs> I forgot and I realized folks have been telling me that I forgot about this and I did but we'll beef it up we'll make it right So I made this bracket, which Austin was painting some of his motor parts, so I got him to spray this thing too. The way that one works is, well, I should say I've actually amazed that I'm getting quicker at and figuring out how to do my uh, imported in and out. So it won't show how I do it, well I'll go through it, I'll do it in a different video, but anyways, what we've done is we got this part, the way you see it. You see the holes. I'm going to set it up to bolt on to reinforce this uh, mount over here. Just because when I want to do the exhaust, uh, it would be hard to get off otherwise. So the way I did it here is it's going to, well, there's going to be some holes. It's literally going to bolt in here, here, and down the side of this brace and then into the lower part of the mount. And, uh, It'll actually wrap around the exhaust and cover up this area here. So, and then my three inch, my regular exhaust here is actually going to go through this opening down here, which then cancels this thing out because it's just, there's no real way to vent this side. I'm happy that side works, so I am cool with that. Anyways, we got that going. I'm going to wait for some paint to dry. And Austin's done painting. I don't know if there's a video of him working on his engine, but he's been doing a bunch of work getting his motor already. He uh, got that thing all painted today. Look at that thing, eh? Nice. We gotta pull that in, mind you. It's supposed to rain tomorrow. He got that in his transmission, and he's just been painting and doing some detailing, so he's doing pretty good. That is one spiffy looking motor, eh? It's gonna be pretty snazzy in that Buick. All right, anyways, I, gonna wait for that to dry and then we'll try to put it on here well we had a movie night and 
none of the paint is dry yet so eh, I guess I will move forward we're gonna go on and I bought a little chunk of line we're gonna do that for that power steering then we can put a hose on it uh, basically I'm just gonna cut this off I'll flare it so we have an end that we can do that and then we'll run transmission lines and see how far this gets. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't know where it's going to end up. Basically, you got to lift it up for everything, so that works out. So put that one there. We're going to cut. Yeah, get my flare kit. We'll cut and do a couple quick flares on this stuff, and then uh, well, hopefully, hopefully I can get it to the transmission. If I can't, there is room to put a trans cooler in the front. I don't know, like. I guess the rad should be okay, although it is kind of a heavy stall I have in it. There is room under there, we can kind of like do our thing. I'll be able to unbolt all this stuff, so yeah, I don't know. We'll try and see what happens here. I mean that's a nice flare for me I want this style just so I can push the hose on but I did it like the fuel connect it's a little too tight I'm gonna try to make it again but just with a little a little less pizzazz to it feel happy the darn tool actually works for a change <laughs> every time I try it's a power steering line and it's like the steel I guess is like stainless or something well it's probably not stainless but it Sure acts like it is. All right, anyways. We're gonna try it one more time here. I gotta not uh, crimp it all the way. I want it to be almost like a bubble flare. There we go. Do that. The way this one works, you just kind of set your dies in until it's flush with the end. Stick them in the tool, snug them up. Grab your proper end that you need. I'm going to go till it's snug and I'm going to try two pumps and see what happens. To the bottoms out. Now I'm gonna go one, one, two. Just see what that looks like. I think that did something. Let's look. Nah, should have done three. All right, it's all good. Let's do it again. Nope. Seems to be my trend. Third time's the charm. It definitely looks like it bubbled a bit. Oh yeah, definitely. I don't know if you can tell. There's a little bit of a blister. Somewhere my hose clamp can hold on and not fall off. Alright. I think I got the feel for it now.
It's a little sharp, but that's a little better. <laughs> this is the first time I forgot to take the flare off. Well, folks, I don't think we did too bad. We got, there's that plate I said I was gonna make. <laughs> I finally did it. I didn't really want to wait for paint to dry. I tried, gave up. Uh, we bolted that in. That's removable so I can get at that exhaust to get it out. Otherwise, I'm pretty much gonna hate life. So that's out of some 3 16 There is plenty of strength there. We got our intercool piping in. Um, we just got to clamp it. I cannot find that little fitting that I was looking for. Uh, we got our power steering line and we actually managed to do the transmission lines. If you look down there, you can see one I was able to do. Uh, like just actually flare it and bolt it in. I had to redo that. And then the other one, we just got a hose just looping that little bit that we needed. So I don't know. I think that worked out really, really well. Uh, yeah. I found my list, so we got that going on. Um, let's see, where are we at with this thing? Because there's actually, we did a lot of stuff. Uh, where are we going to go here? We're going to go in, we're going to say steering is out, universal out, we welded the front clip, shock mounts, we don't know yet. 
Engine and trans. Well, we did the cross member. Uh, we did the trans cooler lines. We did the torque converter bolts, the engine mount, the intercooler. And hey, look at this. We got the front brake pads line, rear brake pads line. We installed the master cylinder. Still got some stuff there. Still got to do the gas pedal. Uh, nothing done in the fuel system and nothing done in the electrical so I don't know that looks pretty good we definitely killed a lot of things off of here in the past few days well this is all coming along pretty good uh, what are we gonna do like we got most of the transmission I guess next round we're gonna go take a look at the shifter uh, somebody did comment and I was like actually <laughs> I don't know why I didn't think of it just moving all my shift mechanism up should work actually really well and it'll get rid of some of the floppiness out of it so we'll kind of visit that I think when we take this inner fender out we can get into there and deal with all that I got to deal with injectors we got to figure that out so that we can actually bolt this intake down and make that permanent uh, I never did get I got to get a barb fitting we're gonna do one on top of the the water pump for that uh, whatever you call that thing steam port get that working uh, what else we got? I'm almost wondering if I'm going to grab that other water pump. I picked up a triple gauge, but uh, it's all mechanical. And I don't have the means to drill and tap the head. So we might use that other water pump because I noticed it had the fitting for a big mechanical doodad. So we just picked up some cheap gauges. I think what I'm going to do is use the water temp. Uh, the car has an oil pressure gauge, so we'll use that one. And then we'll put our boost and and air fuel gauge into there and we can stick those under the dash so we'll deal with a little more mechanical and then we're gonna have to come back and actually look at our floors deal with those things a whole lot of wow well, not a whole lot but there are a few patches that get needed here and there hoping I can get uh, a fella that I know has a lava boom there has got a windshield for me so I'm hoping he can Supposed to uh, bring that out to me that would be awesome then we can uh, kind of get that together so I think that's where we're gonna leave this one as always I want to thank you all for watching and we will catch you on the next one later